This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Memphis Tigers head basketball coach Josh Pastner. Happy holidays, everyone. There may not be a harder working coach, more tireless recruiter, and all around nicer guy than the head basketball coach of the University of Memphis Tigers, Josh Pastner. With that said, there are not too many fans who will slide Josh any slack if his Tigers don't produce this season. And when I say produce, I mean win at least a game in the NCAA tournament. Pastor is in the midst of his fourth season at the helm of the Tigers. In his previous three seasons, the 35-year-old coach produced a 75-win and 29-loss record, the most wins of any Tigers coach through their first three years on the job. The problem is the Tigers' two trips to the big dance under Pastner have resulted in one and dones. In addition, Pastner entered this season still in search of his first victory against a ranked team. The Tigers began the 2012-13 campaign with easily their deepest roster in Pastor's four seasons as top cat. But once again, the team stumbled out of the gate with losses in two of their first three games, duplicating their early season misstep from a year ago. As usual, Memphis is expected to feast on Conference USA opponents and cruise to another conference title. And while that is certainly an accomplishment for the Tigers, it's far from their ultimate goal and won't be enough to satisfy their rabbit fan base. Today, Josh Pastor on the issues with the Tigers, pro and con. Plus, we'll examine their chances for the rest of this season and for their future in the Big East, next on Sports Files. Josh, happy holidays to you, and thanks for being with us. Thanks, Greg. Thanks we appreciate for it. Thank you. You've had a number of days now to go back, look at the videotape of Saturday's loss to Louisville. What do you take out of the game, if you can take out anything positive, and then the negative as well? Well, Greg, we are so much of a different team right now than we were in the Bahamas. Um, we are just a better team. Um, we're... Uh, our energy levels, I'd like to say, I'd like to say, is at a different level right now, at a very high energy level. We're we're better defensively. We're better in in, in really every area. The thing we've got to, the, the negative part of it, or the thing that we got to correct, as I call correctables, is the turnover part of it. And uh, but but right now, Greg, even though we lost to Louisville last week, uh, bottom line is. Uh, we are a better team than we where we started, and that's what fans and people want to see. Are you improving? Are you a better team? And and our and our road where we're going, our trajectory is moving upward. You never want to lose a basketball no. game, but again, the difference night and day from the Bahamas to what you're doing now. So you guys feel pretty good, despite still having not beaten a top 25 team, knowing that there's not a lot of quality wins left on that schedule. You still feel pretty good where you are. Greg, two things. You know, people talk about this top 25 thing, and I think it's just so overrated. Mm -hmm. For the for the eleven, we played a 20, top 25 teams based on the rankings, whatever. Uh, in my four years, four of them came in my first year. Okay, three came in my second year. All right, and then three in the third year, and then the then the team uh, um, uh, Louisville was the the eleventh one. Right. So you're talking seven times. Seven opportunities in my first two years when that team, my first year, really wasn't that talented. And the second year, we were just full of, it was a brand new team full of freshmen. And, and, and out of those 11, seven of the 11 we played were in the top seven in the country. So it's not like we're playing top, and the other four were in the top 15. Right. So it's not like we're playing teams number 24 in the country, number 23. I think that, that stat's overrated. Um, and the second thing is I understand that, that right now in the schedule there might not be other so-called ranked teams. We still have a good schedule. In this day and age, Greg, there's good teams all across the country. There aren't, just because the ranking people think, it's a different time and age in the way that the, the college basketball game is played. There are good teams all across the country. I would agree with you that there's, there's more parity. There's a lot more teams that have a chance to make a run in the NCAA tournament. 
But as you know, because you went through it last year when we talked about seeding, you were yeah. disappointed that you were an eighth seed, and they still go by the numbers, they still go by Absolutely. the RPI. With that said, and I know this is the final year for Memphis and Conference USA, next year it's a different ballgame as you go into the Big East, although that's ever-changing. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Do you wish you had scheduled a few more top-tier teams? But, Greg, here's my thing. We played in the Bahamas. VCU at the time, they're a top-25 team. They're not, they weren't at the time. Right. Um, Minnesota is a top-10 team. 15 team at the time they weren't ranked but they are I mean they are ranked I, right that, now. I mean so there's there's Northern Iowa is going to end up being a top 100 RPI team in the end um, so you got that you've got the Louisville game and remember when we did our schedule in 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 scheduling in the in the preseason or in the summer you're doing a lot of predictions sure so Ohio we when we schedule Ohio we expect them to be right at the borderline top 25 because right. you had the whole team back Harvard was a top 25 team last year we didn't know they were going to lose two of their best players sure. because of the situation things change Th you know you have Tennessee was I, I assume they're going to be a top 25 when we played them and and same as Xavier right so there, there's a lot of things that when, you, when it goes into scheduling um, and you know Oral Roberts that we play after after the Christmas break. They're they're a, they're normally a top you know right there that borderline team where they're they usually win their league and they win 25 to 30 games a year so that's my thing is people don't always understand that you're in scheduling you're doing predicting and 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 that's what you're basing it on. Well, true. And last year you had three top 50 wins over Marshall, I think just Marshall and Southern Miss, and I don't know if they get to that point this year. So there's still the worry about seeding when it's all said and done. But again, you're worried about winning basketball yeah, games. I mean, you, have I mean, you have a chance to make a nice run yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, what we can focus on, uh, the numbers will take care of itself, Greg. What we can focus on is, is getting better, and we have gotten better. And, right. what, and that's my whole thing is, is there is panic mode in bah after the Bahamas, and I'm sitting there saying, hey, is it if, if 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 I had known that the Bahamas was going to be the NCAA national championship, well then and then we should shut the sheet you know shut the season down after that's over. It's a long season, and you got the job is to get better, to improve, to continue to play your best basketball when when conference starts. Five of your players fouled out of that Louisville game. I, I've never seen anything. I've never heard that before. I assume it's happened, but not too many times. You have refrained in criticizing officials. You've been very consistent with that. But now that you look back at the videotape and you look at those plays that were controversial, what do you have to say? Well, obviously, uh, first and foremost, Greg, I mean, I've always, as you know, through my time here, I've tried to keep everything professional and classy mm -hmm. because I also I, I'm representing our young men and 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 we're I'm representing Dr. Reigns and the athletic director, Tom Bowen, and Tiger Nation, so I want to keep it all uh, above board, and uh, that's why I... I have a, uh, a all caps no comment with 25 exclamation points on the <laughs> on the official. So you won't the, change that for me today, I, right? I, I won't change that. But I will say in general terms, a couple of things from looking back on the tape. Um, look, the bottom line is is we did have too many turnovers. Sure. Um, uh, they, you know, Louisville. Uh, one of the ways they really got back in the game is they made free throws. I mean, they went to the free throw line obviously, and they made free throws, especially in that first half, because they were scoring with the clock stopped. And um, but that's just the way the game flows. That happens. What we need to do is, and we understand Louisville's a very good team. I mean, obviously, Coach Patino is going to be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he's one of the greats in the history of the game, and and they've got a very good team. I mean, look, Greg. Bottom line is, in the preseason polls, or you talk to all the so-called experts, everyone either said Louisville or Indiana was going to win the national championship. So, if what it shows you is we're, we would not have played that well against Louisville in the Bahamas. We had a chance to win the game versus Louisville. Bottom line is Certainly did. That, that, my point is that over the three, four weeks, we are a totally different team. Let's talk a little bit about players and, and just quick thoughts on, on some of these guys, some that are really playing well, some that are struggling. The big question this week since the Louisville game around the city, and you know fans are pretty passionate, is what's going on with Adonis Thomas? Yeah, Adonis Thomas. I mean, going going into this season, we we uh, we when I say we, me and the coaching staff, uh, his teammates, Adon, we all felt that he was going to be our best player and kind of be the guy that that stepped up in the area where, where we lose Will Barton. Um, and in the preseason, the practices, anyone that came to watch our practice, he he was the best player. Right. I mean, he was dynamite. Uh, he was making shots. He was he was he was just awesome. I mean, he was. It just so happens that he hasn't got his groove into going the mojo back I'd like to say he's had that one great half that second half versus VCU so I thought he was going to break out of it against Austin P. he got put he hit the three and then he got poked in the eye 
Greg, it's just a matter of time, and I keep saying this, our team can be extremely dangerous once he gets going because technically he, he's a key he, point. He, he's our best player, mm-hmm. and once he plays to that, the level that we need him to play, it, it, we can take off. He needs to get more in the glass, rebound more, uh, get to the free throw line more, but I, I, he's going to snap out of it, and it's only a matter of time. How do you explain the DJ Steffens phenomenon? Well, you know what? DJ Steffens, who's a no-star recruit, was only had uh, interest from Division II schools. Amazing. Um, you know, the guy's just, he, he, and you know what he's done? He's become one of the all-time fan favorites. Not like just a nice little story of a, I mean, like literally up there with the Elliott Perrys, with the, you know, with the Andre Turners, um, you know, up at that level as in terms of one of the all-time favorites of Tiger Nation because he just plays so hard. Every, he leaves everything on the floor. He makes multiple plays per possession. Your team, as you talked about the improvement it has made since the Bahamas, a large part of that, the emergence of Jaron Johnson and the development of the young Shaq Goodwin, yeah. two of the newcomers. Well, you know, uh, a, f- a few things. Um, uh, Jaron, it's, you know, I, I felt maybe the Bahamas might even be in a different story if, if Jaron could have played because here's the thing. He struggled against in our, in, our, in our opening private scrimmage, the so-called, you know, secret scrimmage. And then the second thing is when we played Christian Brothers, he didn't play well. And I felt if he got to play those first two games of North Florida and Stanford and kind of work out some of the rust and be ready to go against VCU and Minnesota, because we Minnesota's his first game, we're just throwing, it in, throwing him in there. I'm telling you, we might have... You might have come out of there two and one. I'm not saying we would have won the game, but I agree it could have been a different. It's a different. It's a different fact, and I and and, and I told people that, and um, uh, and I think people may maybe believe me now once they see him play. So Jaron Johnson is a really good player. He brings tremendous energy, Greg. He's he drags people with him because of his intensity and his defense. Um, uh, you know, I probably got to find more ways to get more even more minutes on the floor. And people always ask me, are you going to start him? You know. to be determined on how all that works itself out. As long out, as he's playing the bulk he, he, of the minutes, yeah. because if he's not, the criticism's going to no continue. Qu- no question. Right. And, 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 and I understand that I want to win games, and, and right now he's playing as, as, if not our best, one of our best players on the team. And so, whether you know, my whole thing, whether you start, not start, I mean, look, you're talking, I mean, you can play 37 minutes and still not start, right. if that makes you're, sense. You're not foolish. You know yeah. who needs to be in there to yeah. win games. Real quick on Shaq. Yeah, Shaq Goodwin, you know, he's continuing to get better. I did not think he had a good game versus Louisville. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but and, and I told Shaq this, that, hey, man, you're playing 27 minutes a game. You're my starting, you're, you're in the starting lineup. You got to, you're no longer, there's not, I don't want to hear an excuse that you're a fresh, you got to bring it because of the load of minutes you're playing and you being a starter, the expectation level now continues to rise. His best basketball is ahead of him. I've said this from the beginning. I think once we get to January, he'll take off where he'll be Mr. Consistent. You know, still right now, he's had some great stretches, so then he'll be a little up and down. We just need him again to be where he's true, truly consistent. Josh, what, how, what's your reaction to when people say he's too nice, he needs to treat these guys a little tougher, he needed to get a technical foul in the Louisville game? And we know you have emotion. We see you on the sideline. But you hear that criticism. Well, let me let me say this: uh, uh, the criticism line here is it's a long line. You know, there's, <laughs> there's a long line, and and I understand that, and uh, that's just part of it. But you know what? We won a lot of games. We won more games in my time here in that in the span that I've been the coach than any other coach in the history of the program. We've when we took over, it wasn't like you know we were decimated when right. I took over the program, right. and so. We are, we, we've maintained it at a very, very high level. We've won over 70% of our games. We have a perfect APR, perfect graduation. You know, I, I, during the time we were on probation, and, and so we're off of that, we're recruiting at an all-time high level. What happens is, Greg, is everyone gets compared to those four years of Coach Calipari. And I love Cal. I mean, that's my guy. But those four years is not reality. That's not even the Memphis program, that four-year program. Because, Greg, what people don't get is, is if you look at the history of the program, is, is that four years has never been done, not at, forget Memphis, in the history of the college basketball. You, you should not be compared to that. Nobody but, should. But that's what happens. A lot of th- sure. you get p- compared. And I understand it. Like, I'm not de- defending that. I, right. I'm okay with it. Like, I welcome it. But, but I try to educate people saying, hey, look, t- that four-year window, John Wooden didn't do it. Coach K didn't do it. That's just that, sp- that was a special 
Right. All stars align. But playing devil's advocate, you can understand what fans want. They want some wins in the NCAA tournament. But, they want to beat some top 25s. You know, I go back to that. But, but, but let me say this, Greg. I, I, I can't win the NCAA tournament games in, in December. Right. I can't, there's nothing I can you do. You feel good about what's going to happen in March, you, right? You no, know, Greg, you, people, when we took over the program, it was decimated. I mean, we were, we, we were, we were, we were starting trying to just to hang on. Right. And it could have gone the other way. We've won a lot of games. We've kept it at, at a very high level, kept it at a high level enough to make sure we, that we had an opportunity to get into another conference, okay, to, into the Big East. So there are so many positives. And the best basketball is ahead, and, and I believe that. And, 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 look, I know I'm not perfect. I, mis- I, I can look back and recognize the mistakes I made. I just know that, um, uh, you know, we're st- that, that should I have gotten a technical foul? I think that's baloney. That's right. baloney. I'm working the referees. I mean, what, what do you? I, I don't buy into that I, either. I, I think that's you know people say well you're standing up for your play. Man, then I, if you lose by two points, you're yeah, going to get the I mean, criticism again. So, so so it's it's just hey here's the deal. All right, we're playing better. We've gotten better, and as and and that's what's the most important thing. Fastest coach by the way at the University of Memphis to 75 wins. So you know the the stats don't lie. But I, again, I I do understand the fans and, and I they want the, more. They want to win the tournament. They respect, want to win games in the tournament. I respect that. And I and let me tell you this, Greg. Nobody wants to win more than I do. I know. And I want to win it for the fans. Like, I love Tiger Nation. I want to win for the players and for the fans. So that's I, – I, 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 I sacrifice time with my own personal fan so I can do everything I can to making sure that we get the best opportunity to win. Josh, you mentioned the Big East. Right now, nobody knows exactly what's going on. I know Tom Bowen, your AD, has kind of been quiet. Mom, he's read some statements that came from Michael Resco, the new commissioner. What can you – say about the situation knowing it's pretty volatile yeah well uh what i can say for the situation is obviously i you know i back obviously my two bosses and and, and uh, mr tom bowen and, and dr Raines and whatever they say goes and uh um, um and so where we're at hey we know we're in conference usa right now right next year we're in the big east and then the year after that we're going to be in in what it's going to be the big east or whatever it may be it's going to be a great league so um we're, we're my thing is is I get it. B- basketball, because of the, 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 the way the leagues are, it's all about football. And I understand that. That's just the facts of it. And there's no, and no one, we can sit and, 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 and try to deny it, just like ratings for, for, the, for football games. Uh, and I saw this in the paper, that the Indiana Butler game was on a right. national thing, small rating. And then they had the Arizona New Mexico game, or New or Mexico the, Bowl. The, yeah, the Nevada. Had better numbers. Had way better numbers as on a, you know. It, Point is, is people, this is a football country. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love football. You love the NFL and college football. So do I. But, but so a lot of the driving force ends up being due yeah, to football. You, and again, bottom line is you'll play who's ever put in front of you, whoever's play, on the schedule. Yeah. Uh, real quick, and then we'll get into five for the road, which we do with our guests to wrap things up. Give me about a minute. What areas do you need to improve on as a coach? Um, well, uh, there, there's a few, I mean, that, that, that come right, right away. I'm always wanting to get better. Um, uh, you know, areas that I, that I can improve on, even things with just, just stuff, Greg, where I look at that, okay, um, uh, you know, whether it's even stuff within personnel when we're recruiting certain, you know, the, a certain prospects and, and, and what in the fits and different things like that, that's just, that's as you go, as you evolve, um, obviously, you're going to get better in, in in-game coaching and in practice game coaching, you know what I'm saying, just as each day goes by. So I don't want to hit on, say, there's one certain thing. I recognize that I need to get better in every area. That's part of being a human being. I, I will, I'm a better coach today than I was, you know, three years ago. Right. I have a better understanding, right. and the game's slower for me. And, and so I get it that, that I need, I'm going to continue to improve as an, as an individual. I'm not perfect. Uh, but I also understand how important it is to Tiger Nation. I recognize that, and and I want to keep. I want to. I, I want to satisfy the fan base, and I understand the best way to satisfy the fan base. The one thing they've never had here is a national championship, and we're going to do all we can. Every day we work, we work like crazy to somehow maybe have an opportunity to do that one day. All right, perfect way to wrap up that segment. We have less than two minutes. First thing that comes to mind. It's five for the road. Okay. Five quick questions for you. Favorite professional team and you don't have to say the Grizzlies to be politically correct growing up who was your team you know what I love the Boston Celtics growing up and and I and I love and I love the organization of the New England Patriots right now too okay favorite professional athlete growing up uh you know what Pat Tillman 
Oh, boy. That's Pat Tillman. What he did was uh, unbelievable. Amazing. Absolutely what yeah. he did was unbelievable. True, true hero. All right. I know you're into music. I don't know if you're, you know, you like the rappers. They come to Memphis Madness. I don't know if that's your genre. What's your favorite music to listen to if you have some time alone? He just pops up on the radio going to practice. You know what, Greg? I'm, I, I like a variety of music, and uh, I appreciate music. Uh, but it, I, 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 Is I your favorite listen. artist? You know what? Um, I, uh, I don't have a favorite artist, but I'll tell you what artist I like that's an old school artist. Uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, Creedence Clearwater? Clearwater? Yes, yeah, yeah, CCR. Yeah, yeah, CCR. Yeah. And so they're good. And uh, I've loved Elton John and Billy Joel. There I went and saw them face to face. So did I. Concert. Wasn't that good? Yeah, it was a great concert. Okay, absolutely. favorite television show of all time? Favorite television show all right now? It's Homeland. Uh, Josh, yeah. thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thanks. Best of luck thank you. as we continue on with the season. Thank you. Thank we'll you. take a break. Overtime is coming up next. Earlier this month, the Memphis Amateur Sports Hall of Fame rolled out its class of 2012 in a ceremony at the Memphis Hilton. The annual affair showcases some of the most talented athletes the city has ever produced. These athletes played for the true love of the game and had much success in careers away from the ballparks and arenas and fields that we became accustomed to seeing them perform at. Now, one of the honorees was an incredible athlete, especially as a golfer. But on this special night, she was honored as a contributor to amateur sports in Memphis. Lynn Parks has put her stamp on women's athletics at the University of Memphis as an associate athletics director. And on her special night, we caught up with her to get a few thoughts on her latest accomplishment, induction into the Hall of Fame. After graduating from Alabama, Lynn returned to Middle Tennessee and enjoyed an amateur career that included playing in the Tennessee State Amateur, the Transnational, and several other regional events. While playing in a golf tournament at the Windyke Country Club in Memphis, she met El Marone, the women's athletic director at Memphis. Subsequently, Lynn was offered the opportunity to join the staff at Memphis State in order to complete her graduate degree and help build a college golf program at the university. She accepted the position at the university in 1975 and has played a major role in the growth of women's golf in the Memphis area. Her role was extremely vital initiating the women's golf program and is serving as the associate athletic director and senior women's administrator. She's had oversight for several women's sports, which include basketball, volleyball, and softball, also track and field and tennis for both men and women. In addition to those responsibilities, Lynn oversees the area for compliance and student athlete services, while she also has acted as the liaison with Conference USA and the NCAA. Lynn's plan, Lynn plans to work at MSU for another year or so, and that turned into a 37-year career. Lynn Park's involvement with the University of Memphis for women's basketball and for all sports, really, golf, tennis, you name it, she was there. Uh, the NCAA recognized her for all of her abilities and had her on several committees, committees rather, for the NCAA. Uh, as a president of the Fast Break Club, sometimes I would want to do something for the club and I'd have to run it by her. And every once in a while she would have to say, no, you can't do that. So to keep us straight and level. But she's been a big asset for the, for the university over the years. A great, great lady. Uh, one that uh, Elma Room picked her and she did a great job from there on out. When you look at athletics at the University of Memphis, of course, the first person that you think of is El Marone. But right after you think of El Marone, the name Lynn Parks immediately comes to mind. Lynn Parks was a pioneer at the University of Memphis in the early days of women's athletics, and she has ushered women's athletics into the modern era of big-time sports. 
For us, what does that mean? It means that she is an advocate for us at every turn, whether it's fundraising, whether it's building facilities, whether it's dealing with player issues. Um, she is a coach's coach, and there's no one who has had the impact at the University of Memphis like Lynn Parks has had in our program. Well, it's, it's a very nice honor uh, when you look at all the wonderful athletes that, are, that were honored here tonight and the ones that have been honored in the previous years. It's uh, quite a collection of talent in the city of Memphis, and, and it's uh, great to be a part of that. And congratulations to all of the recent Hall of Fame honorees. And that'll do it for tonight. Next week, we'll close out 2012 with our AutoZone Liberty Bowl show. Until then, remember, you can catch any of our previous Sports Files shows by logging on to WKNO.org and clicking on KNO Tonight. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and we'll see you next time.